Um, so when we left off last week, we were looking at methods for determining an infinite series or infinite sums. We want to figure out when they converge and when they don't converge. And so what we came up with, what I mentioned at the end of the last class, or actually most of the last class, is this idea of the integral test. Which says that if I have a sum, so let's see. If I have a sum, let's say n equals, it doesn't matter, 1 to infinity of a n, I don't think if, with all of the n positive and decreasing, so if I have this, then So we let f of n be a n, and so then the integral test says that if the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x converges, so does sum. And if the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x diverges, so does the sum. Okay? So this gives us a way for any 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 series or any sum where we can integrate a formula for the terms, provided that the terms are all positive and decreasing. So maybe this positive and decreasing seems like a, a strong restriction, but in fact, you know, suppose we have something that increases for a little while, and then it begins to decrease. Then we just start here. So we don't need to start at n equals 1, because if you apply the integral test for n equals 1,000 on, all that matters is really the tail. Because the beginning is just some number, right? So, for example, well, so here's a stupid example, but we can make it better. Um, if I want the sum from n equals 4 to infinity of 1 over n minus 3 squared, we can easily see whether this converges or not. I already did squared, so let's make it cute. So does this converge or not? And how would I tell? Nobody has a clue? Monday morning? So what would I do? Yeah. Right. I don't need any over. Oh, yeah, of, not over. Okay. Yeah. So I just look at the integral from 4 to infinity of 1 over x minus 3 cubed dx, which is, well, I, in my mind, I think let u equal x minus 3. So du is dx. So this is 1 over u cubed. Right? It's the integral of 1 over u cubed. So the integral of 1 over u cubed, so that's u to the minus 3, so that becomes minus 1 over 2u to the minus 2. So 
this is 1 over 2 x minus 3 squared. Right? No. No. This is the integral of u to the minus 3 du. So this is u to the minus 2, and then I divide by minus 3. So it's not a 3, it's a 2. And we evaluate this from 4 to infinity, which is, well, the infinity part is actually a limit as x goes to infinity of minus 1 over 2 x minus 3 squared. Jeez, this piece of chalk is bad. That's this part, and then minus a minus, 1 over 2, 4 minus 3 squared. So it's a half. Because this piece goes to 0. So there we go. Uh, did I make a mistake? No. Okay, so, okay, so, this, so since this converges, and this does too. Uh, just leave a little bit. Yeah. So right? Did I make a mistake? No? Okay. I usually do. Yeah. I don't care about the bounds for you. So, are you saying you're having trouble with this step? Where are you? There you are. So, okay, in my mind, I'm thinking this. But since du is dx, I don't bother. If you prefer, I could, of course, let this be the integral from 1 to infinity of minus 1 over 2 u squared. That's fine too, but I was just, I mean, this part I don't actually write down, I'm just thinking. But if you can't do it by just thinking it, write it down. But I had to, I had to write it down because when I just think it, you can't really see. I mean, I have to try to open my head up. Usually it's just like blood and stuff. So try that before you get more blood. Okay, so, so, so the point is, that we don't, I can't leave enough here, we don't need to start at n equals 1 because we're just looking at the end. I mean, if you think about this, what the integral test is telling us is still this same picture. We have our series, and I'm putting a box of height a whatever who ends or starts at the point 1, 2, 3, and it does some crazy stuff for a while. But after a while, we want it to start looking like this. And so, and then this part, we look at the integral of. And these are just numbers. And when we say, does it converge? Even if these first numbers are 100 billion, they're still a number. Converge means is it finite. So if I just ignore the first 100 billion terms, so what? We're caring about what happens here. Right, that's really the question of this it's the, the infinite part in infinite sums or infinite series is what really matters, what makes it mean that we have to do some work. Because our question is, when we add them up, is it finite? Okay? So, we can squeeze a little more information out of the integral test. Um, actually, let's just do this same one. So, say, Say we want to know, okay, so we know that this converges. We know that starting at n and going to infinity, 1 over n minus 3 cubed, 
adds up to something. Maybe we want to get a sense of what it adds up to. So, surely I can just use this same picture. Um, notice that if I start, so this is the wrong picture. So I'm just going to draw the same picture again, but without the stuff. So here I'm, I'm starting at 4, and I'm going to put a little box of height 1 over n minus 3 cubed. So I'm looking at the sum that. And so starting when n is 4, I put a little box of height 1 which I guess I'm starting with a4, it doesn't matter, whose height is 1. And then, right, so this is 1 over 4 minus 3 cubed, so that's 1. And then I put a little box, I'm not going to draw this to scale because it will be way too short, here, size a5, which is 1 over 8, and the width is 1, and I put the box 4, 5, so I put the corner here, and so on. Right? Is it clear to people what I'm doing here? 1 over 6 minus 3 is 9, so 3 cubed, or 1 over 27, and so on. And I make these little boxes where I hook them up on one side. And now if I look at the integral here, that goes through those corners, which is, right, so I can look at the integral here, f of x, where I'm going to integrate from 4 to infinity. Then that will be bigger than the sum. Right? The sum is this area. And the integral is this area. Under that. Since the, ser this, the series is decreasing, the integral, the area under the curve, is bigger than the sum. Yes? No? Maybe? Okay. So what does that tell us? That tells us that this sum, 1 over n minus 3 cubed, which is, so just to emphasize, 1 plus, and then the next term is an 8, plus a 27, plus, uh, so 6, 7 minus 3, 1 over 4 cubed, etc. This sum is certainly less than a half, because the integral was a half. This integral here is a half, because we did that already, if I did it right, yes. So this adds, something's wrong here. What did I do wrong here? Can't be less than a half. Uh, three halves. Yeah, I want to start it. I always do this. It's not less than a half, that's garbage. It's got to be less than. OK, what did I do wrong here? Well, it is 1 plus the integral, because the first term is 1. Yeah. Yes? 
Well, yeah, so let's fix that. Because I drew the wrong thing, so this is the wrong, sorry. We'll fix it, don't worry. So let's draw the picture correctly. Um, I drew the wrong picture, but I'll draw the right picture in a second. So let's do this one instead. So this goes through one, here, here, here. And so now it's bigger. Right? So I just went the wrong way. So now it's bigger than a half. So this is bigger than, bigger than a half. But we can also look at the other integral, shift it by one to get, so that if I do this integral that I did wrong, this one, well, it's less than this one, which starts at five. So it's less than, well, that can't be. That's what I have. Why is my brain off today? n plus 1 is smaller and n is bigger. So, oh, it's the tail. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry for confusing myself. All right, so suppose we want to look at yeah, n plus 1 is small. Okay, let me start over. I'm sorry. Let's start with the integral. So here's my function starting at 4. And this integral here is something. I can now estimate this from below by putting my series here. Still screwing it up. Or I can estimate it by, by, from above by throwing away this first term. So I can put the first term here, or I can put the first term here. And I'll get either bigger or small. Right? So this means then, we do it in general and then I'll do it in specific, that wherever I start, so if I want to do the sum of a n from n equals, I don't know, some number k to infinity. <coughs> then it will be bigger if I start at n and smaller if I start at n, n plus 1 at k. That will be bigger and this will be small. So wherever I start, this integral will be bigger, and this integral will be smaller, and it's just a matter of where I put my boxes, either in front or behind. Right? This integral here, the one that starts with k, which is bigger, means that I put my boxes this way. And so on. I put them above the graph. If I want the other one, I can think of shifting over by one and putting them below the graph. Depends on whether I put the corner here or the corner here. Yes? Nobody has a clue what I'm talking about? Okay. So that means that, for example, if I want to know how big is, let's just do one easier. Uh, 1 over n squared, 
Well, I can say that certainly it's less than, so starting at 1, uh, is less than the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx, which is 1. We've done that a million times. And it's bigger than the integral from 2 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx, which is a half. Is it clear to people that this is a half? Yes, I see nods. I don't see any head shakes. Shake your head if you're confused. OK, so I know that this sum is between 1 and a half. Suppose I want a better answer. 1 and a half isn't very good. That's less than one decimal place. Suppose I want a better answer. What would I do? No clue? Suppose I want an answer within a tenth. Increase 2. What? Increase 2. Increase 2. OK, yes. So what does that mean? That would mean that don't start at 1. Just add up some numbers. This is 1 plus a quarter plus uh, a ninth plus uh, 3. 4 is a 16, etc. So go for a while. So and then let's stop at, say, the 10th term. And now what's left? A bunch of terms that I didn't add. <coughs> right? So I just get out my calculator, and I add up these numbers. And then I stop. And I say, how much am I missing? How much am I off? Well, I'm off by this much, but this, if I start at 11, is between the integral from 11 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx and the integral from 12 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. Well, this integral is an 11th. And this integral is a 12. So if I add up these numbers, I'm good to within an 11th. Somewhere between an 11th and a 12th. I probably should have stopped at 9, so I'm good to within a 10th. So that means that whatever these things add up to, and I just sit down and work them out, I get some answer, and that answer is good to one decimal place. Because it's within, it's, it's within 1 11th and 1 12th from the correct answer. Okay? And you can play this game with any series that you can integrate like this. Okay, so what else? Should I do one? Let's, it's okay. So the integrals. Question? No. Okay. The integral test is very powerful. It's also kind of a pain in the neck. But like a lot of things that we do in math, we do some hard work and then we use that hard work to make things easier later. Let's yeah. Is the integral test the same um, similar to the comparison test? No, it's similar but not the same. So we don't have a comparison test yet. I'm going to do that next. But first I need to have some things to compare to. So so far the only series that we know converge We've done by ad hoc methods, and we know this one. So we might as well do this for all powers, right? So we can now say, and usually use the letter P there, P for power. So for example, and let's start at 1. Let's do them all at once. So any power here. So I'm going to use, so again, remember this is 
1 plus 1 over 2 to the p plus 1 over 3 to the p plus 1 over 4 to the p. Just to emphasize what changes and what doesn't. So I want to answer for all of these, whatever power I choose, which ones are going to work and which ones aren't. Well, we already did this. So this will converge exactly when the integral of 1 over x to the p from 1 to infinity converges. And just in case you forgot that problem, let's just do it out. So this is, so when I want to integrate x to the minus p, I get x to the minus p minus 1. Wait a minute, something's wrong with it. I increase plus 1. There was parentheses that I didn't write, but okay. Divided by 1 minus p. Evaluated from 1 to infinity. So this is the limit as x goes to infinity of x to the 1 minus p over 1 minus p minus uh, 1 over p min uh, minus 1 over 1 minus p. And now if we take this limit, so if p is less than 1, then this is negative. This power is negative, right? And so this goes to 0. So this goes to 0 if p is less than 1. Think of p as being like 3. So if p is like 3, wait, bigger than 1? Yeah, that's what I meant. Um, so I'm sort of right-left dyslexic, so I really screw up in inequalities all the time. Um, if p is like 3, then the x is on the bottom. If p is like negative 3, then the x is on the top. So as x gets big, if p is bigger than 1, this goes to 0. And this diverges if p is bigger than 1. And when p equals 1, well, that's the one case I didn't do, but we already know that. When p equals 1, we have the harmonic series. It's a law. Right? So this is a number. If p See? Same problem. <coughs> okay, so if p is less than 1, it diverges. If p is bigger than 1, it converges. So all of that garbage is telling us that this converges when p is bigger than 1, and it diverges when p is less than or equal to 1. Okay? So we did this before, we had a we did this before with this integral. I just did it again. And we see that these so these, these go by the name of a P series. P for power. So that just to summarize, this converges exactly when p is bigger than 1. And that makes sense if you think about it, because when n is really big, it's only going to converge if what you're adding on is small enough. Well, this is small when p is big. 1 over n to the p is small when p is big. So, and let me just emphasize it diverges if p is less than p. So this is sort of your yardstick, or so you wanted to do a comparison tests. Well, now we have a whole pile of things to compare to, namely these guys. So any powers. That makes our life a lot easier. 
because we don't have to integrate all the time anymore. So, the next useful thing that we can do to understand when things converge, again, I'm just re restricting, so A and <coughs> I'm just looking at positive series for now. So suppose I have something like the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of, let's do something easy first, 1 over n to the fifth power plus uh, plus 10 and square. Yes? We can just look at this and see that it converges. So this has to converge. One over 10 to the fifth plus 10 and squared is less than one over 10 10. 1 over n to the fifth. Right? You take a number and you add something positive on the denominator, it makes it smaller. I have, I have n to the fifth people in the room, and we're going to divide up. I don't know, what are we going to divide up? We're going to divide up something, and then I bring in 10 n squared more people. Everybody gets less. So since that's less than that, then for sure, if I add up a bunch of less things, and this less things adds, this, this adds up, then the other thing does too. So this converges to some number. That's what it means to converge. It adds up to some number. We can figure out exactly what number by using the integral test. I don't want to bother. Not exactly, but approximately. So I don't want to bother. So this is less than some number, so it converges. This is called the comparison test. So let me write it more explicitly. And it works just like the comparison test that we used for integrals. And it works for exactly the same reason that the comparison test that we used for integrals works. So again, it says if, well, I don't want to if. So I have positive terms, and then it says that if, uh, so I have also some bn, and if the ans are always bigger than some other bn, then, so n, B ends converge, then so do the A ends. And also, if, let's just turn it around. Whoa. I, I'm, I'm really backwards today. Sorry. If the ANs are bigger than the BNs, and the BNs diverge, then so do the ANs. It's exactly the same as the, the comparison test for integrals. 
if the thing you're integrating is bigger than something else, and the integral exists, then so does the something else. If the thing you're integrating is smaller than something else, and the small thing blows up, then so does the big thing. So this one says if we have something holding us down that doesn't go to infinity, we don't go to infinity either. If we have something pushing us up that goes to infinity, we go to infinity too. And sorry for my trouble with inequalities. Um, okay. So let's do another example of that. have something like this. Does this converge or diverge? You can use the integral test if you want. The integral isn't too hard. Or you can use comparison test if you think of something good to compare to. Yeah. Okay, why? Well, what's an and what's bn? Yeah. So no, this is this is not saying. This is saying if I have two different series, two different sums that I want to compare. So the example that I used here, this is my BN, and this is my AN. And since my BNs are bigger than my ANs, <coughs> my BNs converge, then so do the ANs. Pick something. So we have two choices here. Okay, we want to compare this to one over n. All right. So how does this comp how does log of n compare to one over n? Remember, n is bigger than one. Uh huh. So. If I pick an n, 10, is the log of 10 over 10 bigger or smaller than 110? Okay? Pick 11. Log of 11 over 11, bigger or smaller than 11? Okay. So this is bigger than 1 over n. This is bigger than 1 over n for n bigger than e. So the first term is not. Let's say three. Right, the first two terms are not bigger. <coughs> but we don't care about the first two terms. Because it's just a few terms. But the later terms are bigger. Right? When, when n is 1, I have 0, which is certainly less than 1. When n is 2, I have the log of 2, which is slightly less than 1 over 2, which is smaller than n. But when n is 3, the log of 3 is bigger than 1. So then it starts getting bigger. So this diverges. Since this is true, and we know that the harmonic series diverges. Yeah? So we say that since it's not true. Yeah, just bigger than three. Yes. So, I mean, if this is an exam question, and there will be questions like this on the exam for sure, this answer is the kind of answer you want to write. Right? So, notice that it's not true in the beginning, but then it becomes true. Um, 
No, the question would be, what about this? Does it converge or diverge, and why? It's, it's not significant. You might lose a point if you neglect n equals 1 and 2. But if you just test n equals 1 and 2, you might get it wrong because you'll try to test it the other way. Notice that you can also, if you prefer, you can do this integral. And this diverges too. So if you prefer, you could do the integral test. I don't care. They're both right. You have to do this integral. It's not a hard integral. You make the substitution u equals the log. This is 1 over u du. The integral of 1 over u du is the log, so it's the log of the log. And as x goes to infinity, it blows up. So you can do that instead if you prefer. It's fine. Yeah. How many points are valid do you think it is? I don't understand. But how many points are valid do you think it is? Because you said if you just need to know how You want the one, so you really want to know what happens for n big. And how big does n need to be? So all that matters in the comparison is what happens when n is big. And when n is big, this is bigger than that. When n is small, so what? Okay? Do you need me to do more comparison problems? Let me, let me, let me put up one that's, that actually the comparison test doesn't work very well. Let's say here. And we have to fiddle the comparison test a little bit. So I have this one here. And I have <coughs> n to the fifth plus 10 n squared. So that one we know converges. What if I change that plus to a minus? And now since I have to do, well, n, let's just say n is bigger than 10. Uh, still screws up the 10, right? Let's get rid of the 10. I would like to do a comparison test to 1 over n to the 5th. I 
found something bigger that converges, happy times. But, I guess I'll move over here now. Now I'm going to change the problem to make it a little harder. And then I'm in trouble. And if you want to do partial fractions, you are welcome to do so. So it's almost the same problem. But this doesn't work anymore. So I want to do this. So this is wrong. I want to say, well, OK, 1 over n to the fifth minus n squared. That's kind of like 1 over n to the fifth. And then I look at it, and I think about it, and I say, OK, well, that's bigger than 1 over n to the fifth. Because it is, because I took a little away from the bottom. And this converges. And this tells me nothing. I'm bigger than something that converges. Nice for you. It says nothing. So I would claim, oh, this converges too because they're kind of the same. I still want to be able to say they're kind of the same. This converges. So this converges. But this is wrong. This doesn't help. So how can I make it help? <coughs> well, I can work harder. Yeah. Okay, that I can do. So that's fine. So this is bigger than 1 over n squared for n bigger than 1. So that's fine. And then it's good. So this is fine. So here's one good way. Oh, wait. Smaller than. I'm really backwards today. Uh, okay, so that's good, and that's fine. What else could I do? Well, I can create it, yeah. Yeah, but the comparison only works for positive terms. Now you can turn it, 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 if we turn them both over, it doesn't work. So, the comparison only works for things that are positive. You can make it work for things that are both positive and negative with a little effort that we'll do next time. We'll make it Friday. Yeah? We can break up the original to one over n to the fifth minus one over n squared. If it comes to the series that converge, so uh, no. You could do partial fractions and integrate. Somebody over here really wanted to do partial fractions. So you could do partial fractions and integrate. That's okay too. The thing that I haven't told you that you can do is something that's, well, I guess I'll leave it here and I'll go back over there. So the, the other thing you could do and again, there's many choices here. So this is one of the things that annoys students about this, actually this whole class, is just like with integration, we often have several ways to do the same problem. Or several things to try, and some will work and some won't. Okay, so the, the last thing that we can try is I can try one over n squared minus one minus n squared. That's a sorry. This is a five, right? Okay, five. 
with 1 over n to the fifth. I want to somehow compare these two things. Because in my heart, I know this doesn't matter. When n is big, n squared doesn't matter. So I want to compare these two. So let's look at the limit as n goes to infinity of one of them divided by the other one. Jeez. I can't get a number out. If I take this limit, so this is n to the fifth minus n squared over n to the fifth limit. This is 1 minus 1 over n cubed is 1. What does that tell me? If I look at the limit of the ratio of two things, what does this say? And it's 1. What does this say to me in words? What? They're almost equal. So for n big, 1 over n to the fifth minus n squared is almost the same as 1 over n to the fifth. This means that, in fact, I can compare the two series. If the limit of the ratio is 1, <coughs> some number, then they're comparable. And so, I'm not going to prove this, but we can change the comparison test to a new kind of comparison test called the limit comparison test, which I can say in one minute. So again, A n, B n, positive series. And then we say, if the limit as n goes to infinity of one over the other is not zero, and it's not infinity, then the two series do the same thing. says if I have a series of positive terms and something that looks kind of like it, if for big things their ratio is not zero, if it doesn't blow up, then they do the same thing. So in this case, it doesn't really matter what's here because the limit will kill it. <coughs> One is less than five in power. I'll come back to that. So we have now three tests. Yeah. Does it matter which? No, because I said it's not zero or infinity. So pick one, put it on the top. Put the other one on the bottom. If you get a number, you're good. 